Okay, family, here's a word for you all. I pray the blood of Jesus over this video. I pray the blood of Jesus over any and all who listen to it. And as always, in your prayer closets, ask for confirmation. And if this is from the Holy Spirit of God, please, Jesus, fill me with your love, joy, and peace as I let the Holy Spirit speak through me to your church and our family. In Jesus Christ's most holy, holy name I pray. You will know them by their fruits. In Matthew 7, chapter 7, verse 15 through 20, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. It is imperative that the church and all of us know the good fruits from the bad fruits. The good fruits are written of in Galatians 5, verses 22 to 23. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Those are the good fruits. We also must know what it is that are the bad fruits and how we can differentiate differentiate between the two is written in Proverbs chapter 6 9, 16 through 19 these six things doth the Lord hate yea seven are an abomination unto him a proud look a lying tongue and hands that shred innocent blood a heart that devil devises wicked imaginations feet that be swift into running to mischief a false witness that speaketh lies and he that sows discord among the brethren. These are the bad fruits and how you can tell who is sowing what. I hope that this helps my friends and family in their walk and the ability to be able to discern between the good and bad fruits. In Jesus Christ's most holy name, I pray for you all. Right now, church, I am in the valley. I no longer have my job as of the 17th. And um, I'm in the valley, and uh, it's going to make me stronger as he's getting me prepared for something. He doesn't bring bad things into our life, church. He lets the bad things come, in, come into our lives, but they're not from him. But as they come into our lives, they are to teach us a lesson. They are to make us stronger in this life. So that when we are with Him in heaven, our next life will be easier. Our eternal life. So just know that whatever it is that you have to face, it will make you stronger. It makes you rely more upon Him. It strengthens our faith strengthens our belief um, as I am in the valley I can honestly tell you that I praise the Lord every day because it's when we are in the valley that the enemy seeks to to beat us down and to let us feel that God has left us or has forsaken us and that is not the truth he is right here beside me I praise Jesus for being here right here beside me, making a way for me through the wilderness so that I can come back home to Father God. And I pray for all of you who are going through the wilderness right, wilderness right now, whether it be your health or your finances, problems in your marriage, problems that you might be facing that are insurmountable. And I ask you to join me in praising our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the name who is above every other name, 
and tell him, Thank you, Jesus, for this wonderful day. I rejoice with you and my brethren in this day that God has made for us. And I thank you for all that I have, a roof over my head, food on my plate, a healthy family, a whatever it is, gifts that you, that you have. I rejoice in my salvation. In Jesus' name, God bless you all.